This is Vivo V27 and the V27 Pro, which are essentially the same phones but the V27 has a slightly less powerful but still a very capable chipset. The key selling point of the V20 series is premium camera experience for the mid-range phone price. Depending on the market, the V27 costs around 380 euros and the Pro about 440 euros. Both phones have a 50 megapixel shooter at the core, an 8 megapixels ultra wide, and a 2 megapixels macro lens. One of the highlights, an integrated ring light for night portraits that I'll talk about in just a bit. On the front, there is a 50 megapixel shooter with autofocus. When it comes to image quality, just like most wide angle cameras in this price bracket, it could produce much sharper images. However, the star of the show is the main shooter that is able to take pretty much flagship grade quality photos that are very sharp and detailed, dynamic range is excellent and I like true to live color reproduction. Excellent quality photos. Even 2 times sensor crop images look very good. I'm not a big macro photographer but the overall quality is decent for occasional use. The portraits look very nice. The edge detection is usually good, skin tones are depicted accurately and I just love the overall look. Social media ready material out of the box. Low light image quality is nearly flagship great. The pictures are detailed, sharp and there is just minimal noise. The night mode is available on the wide angle shooter but I suggest you using only the main lens for the best quality. Low light portraits make this phone stand out thanks to the built-in ring light which automatically adjusts the brightness and works in tandem with software to provide bright and clean looking images with a nice blurry background. Selfies look very sharp and detailed and the selfie portraits look very good too. A high quality front facing camera. When it comes to video, it is a little bit sad that the 4K 60fps footage is very shaky even though the quality is good. That's why I suggest you use 4K 30fps mode for a nice, stable and smooth footage. Well, there is some panning stutter like on most Android phones but overall, the quality of video is very good. You can record selfie videos up to 4K 60fps resolution and the quality is very good but there is no video stabilization which is disappointing. Well, there is the so-called steady face feature which uses a significant crop and it is limited to 1080p 30fps. The night video quality is pretty decent with just minimal noise but that really depends on the scene. The design is something that really stands out. First of all, the magic blue and emerald green editions feature the color changing glass that changes color when exposed to sunlight or UV light. I think this is a really cool feature. For instance, the phones look light when you are indoors and get noticeably darker when you are outdoors, so you are never bored of the same color of the phone. Further, each phone's backplate may have a gradient finish depending on the angle of the light that hits the phone, which is pretty nice. Also, it is worth noting that this magic blue model uses Flowrite AG glass while the emerald green uses emerald glass. The phone is very thin measuring just 7.4 mm. Combined with the curved back and the front, it feels very comfortable in the hand. The build quality is excellent and it feels quite premium despite the fact that the device uses a plastic frame. One of the shortcomings, a single bottom firing speaker is pretty good overall but it can't compete with dual speaker systems. Another flaw of the device, there is no water or dust resistance. On a positive note, the phone feels quite light in the hand. The Pro model weighs just 182 grams whereas the regular version weighs 180 grams. Despite a relatively low weight, both phones sport 4600 mAh batteries that last a long time. For me, this is easily a 1 or even a 2 day battery phone depending on how you use it. Both devices support 66 watts flash charge but they ship with an even more capable 80 watts flash charger. Their charging time is just about 51 minutes. I really like the display. This 6.78 inch 10 bit AMOLED panel has a 120 hz refresh rate, it can reach up to 1000 nits of full screen brightness and it's just a very nice screen that is easily viewable outdoors. The under the screen fingerprint reader is usually fast, accurate and reliable.
When it comes to hardware, the Vivo V27 sports a MediaTek Dimensity 7200 whereas the V27 Pro has a 8200 chipset. As far as day-to-day -day performance goes, both phones perform really well. They are fast and responsive and overall, the Funtouch OS 13 feels like a well-optimized user interface. There are quite a few customization options that I don't really use but it's always good to have the freedom to tweak the phone in a variety of ways. The gaming performance is pretty good on both devices but the Pro model obviously has more power to handle graphically intensive 3D games. The V27 is also pretty good but you may see some skipped frames and a bit of stutter in titles like Genshin Impact. So if you like playing games on your phone, you should go for the Pro model. All things considered, the Vivo V27 series devices offer a compelling package that is loaded with features. While it would have been nice to have a dual speaker system, I miss proper video stabilization on the selfie shooter and there is no water resistance. On a positive note, the main and the selfie cameras are very impressive despite a few flaws, the halo ring light works well for low light portraits, the devices sport a unique color changing design, the overall performance and the battery life are good and the display is nice and sharp. At the end of the day, the Vivo V27 series phones have a few flaws to consider but pros easily outweigh the cons. In fact, these Vivo devices are one of the best you can get in this price bracket and if you are looking for a solid mid-range phone with some flagship grade qualities, you should definitely check out the Vivo V27 or the Vivo V27 Pro. What do you think about these Vivo phones? Would you buy these devices or would you choose another option? As always, like the video if you liked it, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and as always, it was Linus, thank you for watching and see you soon.